Hey guys, it's Iran and welcome to part 2 of solving find the duplicate number. This video will be all about Floyd's algorithm for cycle detection. So if you don't really care about solving find the duplicate number and you're here just to learn about Floyd's algorithm and understand why it works, then this video is also for you. But if you are here to solve find the duplicate number, I do suggest you watch part 1 first. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, so just a quick reminder, in the previous video we showed that this question is equivalent to find the entry point to a cycle in a linked list. And by the way, this is actually also a lit code question. It is called uh, linked list cycle two. It is lit code 142. So our list has this structure. There is a part before the cycle and then there is a cycle. And our goal is to find the entry point to the cycle. And as you already know, we can do that with Floyd's algorithm for cycle detection. And this is how it works. In Floyd's algorithm, we have two parts. In part one, we have two pointers. One is slow, it moves one position with each iteration. The other is fast, it moves two positions with each iteration. We move the pointers until they meet. And how do we know that they will always have to eventually meet? Well, the reason they have to meet is actually pretty intuitive when you think of the pointers as runners on a circular track. If one of the runners moves twice as fast as the other, then the fast runner will inevitably overlap and pass the slow runner. That means that at some point, when the fast runner is some number of laps ahead of the slow runner, they must meet. The more formal explanation is this. At each iteration, the slow pointer moves one position and the fast pointer moves two. At iteration zero, both will be at position zero. At this point, both will have traveled zero units of distance. Let's say those units are meters. At iteration one, the slow pointer will have traveled one meter and the fast pointer will have traveled two meters. At iteration two, the slow pointer will have traveled two meters and the fast pointer will have traveled four meters and so on. By the way, at some point, the pointers will be moving in circles, which means their positions will start to repeat, but the distance traveled will keep growing with each step, right? Even if you're running in circles, the distance you've run still grows. But the important thing I'm getting at here is that the distance between the pointers actually grows by one meter at each iteration. At iteration one, the distance between them was one, because two minus one is one. At iteration 2, the distance between them was 2 meters because 4 minus 2 is 2, and so on. Now at some point, both pointers will enter the cycle, and because the distance between them grows by 1 with each iteration, meaning the distance will not skip any integer from that point on, it is inevitable that at some iteration it will be a multiple of the cycle's length. And if they are both standing in a cycle and the distance between them is a multiple of the cycle's length, then what it really means is that they are actually standing at the same position, right? If I stand on a cycle of length four and you are eight meters ahead of me, then uh, it basically means that you are two full laps ahead of me and back at the same position as me. And that is why the two pointers must meet at some position on the cycle, because at some point the distance between them will be a multiple of the cycle's length. The second part of Floyd's algorithm is a little more tricky. Once we find the position where the two pointers meet, we stop. We put one pointer at the head of the list and one pointer at the meter point. And then we move both pointers one position with each iteration. What Floyd's algorithm relies on is that at some point they will meet and where they meet is going to be the start of the cycle. And remember that is the point that we are looking for. We are looking for the uh, entry point to the cycle. So why is that true? Why do they always have to meet at the start of the cycle? So we have a list that looks like this. There is some part of the list that comes before the cycle. We've established that, right? Let's say its length is x. There is a point where the cycle starts and there is a point on the cycle where the pointers met at the first phase of the algorithm. Let's call the distance between the start of the cycle and the meter point y. We'll call this distance z and I'm going to call the length of the cycle c, so c is y plus z. The number of steps the slow pointer made before meeting the fast pointer at the meter point is uh, x plus y and maybe before they met, it made a few full laps. We don't know, so let's say it made i full laps before meeting the fast pointer here. Similarly, the number of steps that the fast pointer made before meeting the slow pointer is x plus y plus j full laps. And because the fast pointer moves two positions on a single step, then we divide this by two. Now we know that the two pointers met at this point, meaning they got here at the same iteration after the same number of steps. Uh, remember with each iteration both will move one step, the difference between them is the step size, the fast pointer will move uh, two positions 
in one step. But what we can say is that the number of steps the slow pointer made is equal to the number of steps the fast pointer made. Now let's simplify this equation uh, here. Uh, we'll multiply both sides by two. Then one more simplification to get this. And now I'm going to do a bit of algebra magic to get to where I need to go. Um, I'm going to add C and subtract C. I hope you agree that we didn't change the equation by doing that. Uh, it's like adding zero to this side of the equation, right? So we didn't do anything. And what I can do now is I can move this minus C in here. And I will move this C here. And now we have this equation. Now this part here is just an integer, right? We don't really care that it's the number of laps the fast pointer made minus twice the number of laps the slow pointer made minus one. Uh, whatever this integer is, we can just call it k. And one last thing I want to do is uh, look at this part, c minus y, and replace it with z, right? z is exactly the same as the cycle's length minus y. And this equation is the key. x equals kc plus z. What this equation means is that taking x steps from the head of the list is exactly the same as taking kc steps from the meter point, that's k full laps from here, which puts us back at the meter point, and then take another z steps, which puts us right at the start of the cycle. And that is why the second phase of Floyd's algorithm works, because we just showed that moving x position from the head of the list is equivalent to starting at the meter point, doing some number of full laps, and then move z positions. So what we do is we put one pointer at the head of the list, one pointer at the meter point, and we move both of them at the same pace. When they meet, we will know they are definitely at the start of the cycle. And that is how we find the entry point to the cycle. And that is basically the whole thing. We can go ahead and write the code now. Okay, so let's get rid of this code. Now we start with two pointers, right? The slow pointer that starts at position zero. And then the fast pointer that also starts at position zero. Now we want to keep updating them until they meet. So uh, we want to break uh, in case they are equal, they are pointing at the same position. The slow pointer moves one position with each iteration. The fast pointer moves two positions. So this is the first phase of the algorithm. Uh, when they meet, we will break out of the loop and both of them will be on the meter point. So the next phase, we wanna have one pointer that points to the head of the list, that is uh, cell zero. And the second pointer will start from the meter point. So it, it could have been fast, it could have been slow, both of them are equal at this point. And while the two have not met yet, we want to advance both of them one position. Now we only exit this while loop when the two meet, they are both equal, and so we return one of them. And that's the whole thing. This should be the entry point to the cycle. So let's try to submit this and we are good. So the time complexity of this solution will be worst case O of n, the space complexity will be constant, and we did not modify the input array. And that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.